Hello, in this video I'm going to be introducing you to integration, okay, and it's pretty easy, all it is is the opposite or the inverse of differentiation. So if you don't know how to differentiate, go down below, watch my playlist on differentiation first and then come back and watch this. But yeah, as I said, it's the opposite of differentiation. So that just means if I were to take a function and I differentiate it, so I get its derivative, if I then integrate the derivative, it's going to take me back to the original function, okay, that's, that's all it does. So let's take a look at some examples of derivatives, okay, and then integrate them just to give us some context on how this is going to work. So derivatives of these three equations, so we've got y equals x squared plus 1, y equals x squared plus 42, and y equals x squared plus c, right? Let's take the derivative of all three. So derivative of the first one, well, that's just going to be 2x. Derivative of the second one is just going to be 2x. And the third one, well, a constant is just any number, so that just goes to zero. So the derivative of the third equation is also going to be 2x. So all three of these equations have a derivative, dy by dx, of 2x, okay? So when we take a derivative, what do we do? Well, we times by the power, so let's write this here, we times by the power, and then we subtract one from the power, don't we? Now, remember I said that integration was the inverse or the opposite of this. So when we integrate, we're going to be adding one to the power, and then we're going to divide by the new power, okay? So let's take a look at our derivative here, and let's just follow the integration rules. So let's add 1 to the power, so we're now going to have x squared, or 2x squared, and now let's divide by the new power, so we're going to get 2x squared divided by 2, which leaves me with x squared, right? Which is the first part of all of these equations. So it's kind of taken me part the way back when I integrated. But remember what I said, it's going to take us back to the original function. So what about all of these constants, right? Where did they go? Well, when we differentiated them, they all got lost, right? They all go to zero. So when we integrate, we have to take into account that there may be a constant that's disappeared through differentiation. So when we integrate something, we add on what's called a constant of integration that represents that number that could have been lost through differentiation, and we can then later on find it, which will be my next video. So let's take a look at finding the integral, okay, and this symbol here represents my integral, it's just like a stretched out s. We want to find the integral of 2x with respect to x, that's what this dx means. So remember what I said, we're going to add 1 to the power, so we're going to get x squared divided by the new power, so divide it by 2, so we've got 2x squared divided by 2, which is going to leave me with x squared. And remember what I said, we need to take into account any constants that got lost through differentiation, so we need to add on the constant of integration, which is just a plus c. Now, you're not always going to have to do this, okay, because later on we'll look at what's called a definite integral, and that's one that has numbers or bounds on my integral, like those two numbers I've just added on. But for the integrals we're going to be looking at today, which are called indefinite integrals, which are ones without those uh, bounds, those numbers, we need to always add a constant of integration, that plus c. So this is the generic rule for integration. Say we have some function x to the power of n, and we want to integrate it. Well, we add 1 to the power, so we get this x plus 1, and then we divide by the new power, so we're dividing it by n plus 1. Now, this will work for pretty much any basic function you come across, unless n is equal to negative 1, okay? Because if n equals negative 1, we're going to have to divide by 0 when we substitute it in there. And we can't divide by 0 because you just can't, right? And so because of that, we have to integrate functions where n is equal to negative 1 another way, which we will look at in a later video. So let's look at some examples just to get some idea of how to do it. So first one, taking finding the integral of x cubed with respect to x. So we're going to add 1 to the power to get x to the power of 4, divide by the new power, so we're going to get x to the power of 4 divided by 4. So x to the power of 4 divided by 4, and then add on the constant of integration, so plus c. Let's look at this second example where we're integrating 3x squared plus x with respect to x. Now this works the same way as differentiation, where if I've got multiple terms, I can just integrate each term individually. So the integral of 3x squared, well that's just going to be add 1 to the power, so 3x cubed divided by the new power. So we've got 3x cubed divided by 3, that's just going to go to x cubed. The next one, the integral of x, well that add 1 to the power, we get x squared divided by the new power, we've got x squared over 2. So plus x squared over 2. And don't forget the constant of integration, plus c. Let's look at this third example where we're integrating a, where a is just going to be some constant. It's just going to be a number, right? So where are the x's? Well, there aren't any, but we could write an x in like this. We could say it's the integral of a multiplied by x to the power of 0, because x to the power of 0 is just 1. And now we can integrate this because we add 1 to the power, so we get 
x to the power of 1, which is just x, and then divide it all by 1, which doesn't change anything. So this is going to equal a multiplied by x and the constant of integration plus c. The fourth example, we've got the integral of 1 over x squared, which we could rewrite as the integral of x to the power of negative 2 dx. So add 1 to the power, we get x to the power of negative 1. And dividing by negative 1 just turns it into a negative. So we get negative 1 over x, or negative x to the power of negative 1, plus the constant of integration, plus c. And finally, we'll take a look at this integral of square root of x. So that's equal to the integral of x to the power of 1 half with respect to x. And so we're just going to um, add 1 to the power. So we're going to get x to the power of 3 over 2. And then divide by this, so we're going to get 2 over 3, x to the power of 3 over 2, plus the constant of integration, plus c. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe and share, and go over to my channel for tons of other maths tutorials. Thanks for watching.